Well, the 71 uh, GT uh, uh, is back. This time, we're putting an alternator on it. So this being in 1970, originally had the five wire alternator on it. Now this thing's already had the three wire alternator, a rebuilt one put on it at some point in its history, but they never actually put the connector on it. They just stuck the wires on the terminals. And what we're going to do is we're putting the new three wire alternator on it because that's pretty much the only thing that's available as a new alternator these days. And we're going to go ahead and convert this and put the proper connector on there to go with that alternator. And of course, we got to just take off these two bolts underneath here. There's an adjustment to slide it down and we'll do that in a time lapse real quick. So let's get moving. So before we start the time lapse, I just want to say we've already disconnected the battery. You should always do that first before you touch any electrical components. So if you saw my last video about this car, we were testing the alternator, you would see that the alternator sometimes was charging, sometimes wasn't, which would be actually in the regulator assembly here. But the other thing you can look at is it wasn't charging, it was actually charging reasonably well, but one thing you can look at when you dot this off, you can spin this and see how easy it's spinning. That means there's not, the brushes really aren't putting much tension on the commutator, which means it's, it was pretty much at the end of its life anyway. Uh, it wouldn't have taken much longer before it wouldn't have been charging well enough. So we got to take the pulley and the fan has to go onto the new alternator because they're supplied without them. I find the best way to do this is a DAC deck because you need it, the shock waves, if you just sit here with a ratchet, it's hard to hold on to this and get it apart sometimes. So this is the easiest way to do it. Just and off it comes. Now you need to be a little kind of careful putting it back on, especially on generators, because sometimes these threads can be a little on the soft side. So you don't want to get too rowdy with putting it on, but you obviously want to make it tight enough to hold it. Uh, but you can strip the threads out on a generator using one of these. Sometimes if they can be really stuck on there and you can grab them with a little two draw gear puller. So I actually have this, which is going to work perfect for what I'm doing here. So I can just get this thing set to the right width here and just. It's not very often that they come off that difficult, but of course, with me filming things, they always come off that difficult. And then we just transfer it all over to this. But I'm gonna probably go ahead and clean these up first because that's just the way I work. So we'll come back to that here in a minute. All right, so these are the wires for the alternator. And these are for other things, you know, distributor, the, uh, and the uh, oil pressure gauge, which only some, only like the 70, what, 69 through 71 cars have, I think. And then for the temperature. So we're only dealing with these. I went ahead and stripped the end of this already off. So this is a link wire that goes down and back up. So it actually connects both of those together, but also goes back to here. This is the wire that goes back to your light on your dash to tell you whether you're charging or not. And so we only need that wire and this wire. We don't need this one. Now the MOS instructions also says that there's a black wire, but we don't have a black wire here. And if yours does have a black wire, that's a ground and that would just be taped back. So all we need to do here is this wire can actually be folded back into the wiring harness and taped back up when we tape it all up 
or if you don't, you don't even have to cut it and take it all apart if you don't want to. You can leave it all that like that and just tape the extra one back along with the brown, the brown wire and the black if you have it. But you need to make sure you're getting the right end of this. And you can see it looping back and around and you don't want that one. You want to want it to come straight up. So we'll put terminals on these two here, tape everything else back, and then that's what we'll connect to the alternator. So in the kit they give you these flag terminals, two large ones and one small. We're only going to use one large, one small. So you strip the wire down to a length where this first one will crimp down onto the insulation and the second one will crimp down onto the wire itself. Now, if you want to and you have the stuff available to, you can actually tin this with solder first so it's solid and then you can crimp it down and if you really really want you could put a little more solder on top to make sure it doesn't go anywhere but if you do not have the ability to do that or you don't have the supplies you don't have to do that all right so i went ahead and tinned the ends of the wires then when i crimped that over then i went ahead and put a little bit of solder on there so i got a good positive connection on both of them. You got a little too much solder on that one, but that's all right. It'll still fit fine. So then we snap this one into the small terminal here. So you hit click. Now this one here can go into either one of those two. It doesn't matter. So we'll put that in there until we hit click. Boom. And then Snap that on there. Now that's ready to hook up to the alternator. Now we just want to tape all this stuff back and make this all nice and neat again. And then we're ready to actually install the alternator onto the engine. So when I was taking off the alternator, this stud here was actually loose and spinning in the back plate because there's a lock nut on there. And um, I couldn't get it to come loose, so that's why I had to get in there with a big wrench and hold onto this to take out a loose to make the adjustment got that tightened back up so that shouldn't be a problem we start out by just putting this on there but loose enough it can move now this sleeve here moves back and forth within this ear and if it doesn't line up all you got to do is just give it a little bit of a tap lightly with a hammer it'll move over to where you need it no big deal a lot of people get stuck on that because they don't realize that but then when we get it done, get a bolt in there, this is going to have to kind of bark around. Now these things here never fit. This arc here is never deep enough to actually fit the kits that are available right now. So you got to re-bend that to get it to snap in there, right? But then we we'll push that in there and then pull this up. And then that should hold, go in there and... And that's what holds that so it never wants to back out. So I'll get this all bolted on and then and tape all this stuff up and button this down. And then we can test it for voltage, make sure it's putting out properly. All right, so now we got all everything bolted on and hooked up. Now we can start the thing and watch the multimeter here and see what kind of voltage we're getting. And we'll see if this thing will start. It's been a little rough starting lately, but let's give it a go. All right, 14.3. We're looking pretty good. Starter's not sounding so good. That's something we're going to have to replace here pretty soon, though. But there you go. There's the alternator for... A MGB five wire to a three wire conversion. Also, same thing for a TR6 that has a five wire alternator.